All right then, so right now, when we make any kind of change to our app in the code over here, and we want to preview that change, what we have to do is go down to this Run tab down here, and then click on this Hot Restart button, and then that essentially refreshes the app over here so we can see that change. Now that's okay, but we're making changes quite a lot, and we have to keep coming down here and pressing the Refresh button, and it would be nice if there was a simpler way. Now Flutter also comes with something called Hot Reload, meaning whenever we make a change and save it over here, the app can auto reload in the preview screen. Now right now that's not working and that's because of how we're structuring our code over here. In order for us to use Hot Reload, we're gonna to have to talk about something called stateless widgets. So what I'm gonna do is come down to the bottom over here and I'm gonna create a stateless widget first of all. Now we can do that using a little snippet in Flutter, just ST, which stands for state, and then less, and then tab, and it creates this class. And this is gonna be a custom stateless widget class. So we're gonna give this a name, I'm just gonna call this test. And what we're doing is just creating a class called test, which extends stateless widget. So in essence, we're making our own custom stateless widget here. Now, pretty much everything, remember, in Flutter, every widget is just a class. So when we're using these things up here, like the text widget, the floating action button widget, the text style widget, the center widget, these are just instances of those classes in Flutter. These are all just widget classes. Now, these are all built into the framework. What we're doing down here is basically making our own widget class, and that's extending the base stateless widget class in Flutter. So we're inheriting all of those core functionalities in stateless widgets. Now, I keep using the word stateless when I talk about this widget, but what does that mean exactly? Well, in Flutter, we can have either stateless or stateful widgets. Right now, we've created a stateless widget, and that basically means that the state of the widget cannot change over time. For example, the layout or the colors or any data we use inside that widget has to be final and it cannot change over time as we use the app. It can contain data, but that data can't change after the widget's been initialized. Stateful widgets, on the other hand, they can contain state which can change over time. So things like its color, its layout or any data inside it, it can change over time. So for example, some kind of counting widget that displays the number of flies that you swat on an app, that would have changing data over time. As you swap more flies on the screen, the number would go up, right? So we would use a stateful widget for that. So depending on what we need in our apps for our different parts of it, our different widgets, we'd either choose a stateless widget or a stateful widget. Right now we're using a stateless widget, but later on in the course, we will also look at stateful widgets as well. Okay then, so at the minute we're creating this stateless widget right here, which is called test. And I'm gonna rename that home because ultimately this is gonna represent all of the content we're gonna show on the home screen. And this is extending stateless widget, which means we can't have any state that changes over time inside this widget. Now, I mentioned that the reason we're doing this, or one of the reasons we're doing this is because it's gonna enable hot reload for us. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. But another reason we're gonna do this is because it's gonna make our code drier and much more reusable. We can easily reuse our own custom widgets later on. And we'll see that in action later in the course. But anyway, how does this stateless widget help with hot reload? Well, first of all, we have inside it this build function right here. And we can see the return type in front of the function is a widget. And that's what we're doing inside this function. We're returning this container widget right here. Now we've not seen the container widget, but don't worry about that for now. All we're doing is returning a widget. Now ultimately what I want to do inside this widget is return a widget tree of our home screen. Now we've already kind of created that over here. We've done it directly inside the material app inside the home property. So what I'm gonna do is just copy or rather cut all of this scaffold stuff and everything inside it. I'm gonna cut it so we're just left with that home property and I'm gonna return it inside this build function. So now we're returning this widget tree, which starts with the scaffold and all of the different widgets inside it nested. Now at the bottom, I just need to get rid of this comma because now we're not adding another widget after it. We just replace that with a semicolon because remember, we're returning something here. And at the end of a return statement, we have a semicolon. Anyway, now we're returning this widget tree. 
But back to this build function, how is this helping us with the hot reload problem? Well, this build function right here, this is what is responsible for building up the widget tree inside the stateless home widget. So all of this stuff right here. Now, whenever we make a change to the code inside this widget tree, Flutter is gonna detect that when we save it and it's gonna cause the build function to rerun. Now, when this reruns, Flutter is gonna update what we see in the screen over here. That's hot reload in action. Now, it doesn't need to rebuild the whole app that we create, just where the code changes inside it. So in the future, we could have many different stateless widgets. And if we make a change to one of them inside our code, Flutter only needs to rebuild that widget for us and update that on the screen. So that's going to result to a much quicker update in the device preview. So we don't have to go down here now to run and then hot restart to see that in action. So let's do now a little change. All I'm going to do is just come down to here and say, click me and press save. And now if we do this, then we have an issue. So let's go down here and okay, I know why this is. It's because we're not actually using this home widget. We've built this widget, but we're not actually using it anywhere. And what we want to do is use it for the home screen in the material app. So let me now do that and we're saying, okay, well for the home screen, we want to use this custom home widget that we've created right here, which is returning this widget tree. So now all of this should show on the home screen. So let me now save this and now it's reloading. And now what we need to do to begin with is one quick hot restart. First of all, just to capture any changes, then you can see click me. Now, if I take that off, if I change something inside this widget and save it, now it should automatically reload over here. We don't have to go to run and then hot restart again because we've made a change inside this build function right here and it's detected that change. It's rerunning the build function and then updating that over here. That is hot reload in action. Now, I said that this makes our code drier when we use our own custom widgets like this and it does. And that's because we can now reuse this home widget anywhere else in our app if we want to. We might not necessarily do that because we only have one home screen, but if we made up a widget that we want to use in several different places on different screens in our app, we could then reuse this same widget every time we need it. Instead of rewriting out the code for every place, we just put it in a widget like this, and then we use an instance of that widget when we need it like this. So that's nice. Now, there's one more thing I wanna talk about in this video, and that's this override thing right here. Now, this is used to say that this build function right here will override the one defined in the class's ancestor. So the thing that we extend from, which is stateless widget, because that has its own build function as well. So we're saying we want to use this build function because we're using this override thing right here. We wanna use this build function instead of the one we initially inherit from this stateless widget. That's all this means. We're redefining the build method right here. So now we've done that, whenever we make a change, we don't need to click our hot restart anymore. Well, we will be using that later on when we start to use state and we wanna reset that state or data in our app. But for now, we don't need to worry about coming down here and clicking this every time we make a change.